All right. Um, before I left to go to Africa, I was dealing with spiritual gifts. And uh, I want to do at least one or two, thank you, one or two messages to uh, uh, bring it to a conclusion, to a close. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to keep uh, dealing with uh, spiritual gifts because it's uh, so important. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, deal with this. Um, I want us to look at uh, four passages this morning, and I'm going to read all of them. First Peter chapter four and verse ten. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And Romans chapter 12, verses 6, 7, and 8. I think those are the passages I gave to the uh, media team. I forgot to give you one more. So if you're able to find it quickly, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Do we all have the passages down? Okay, first one is 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Second one is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. And 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 9. And uh, I usually read to you in NIV. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to read them in NIV. Uh, if you have a different translation, just be aware of that. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Let's go over that again. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastor, pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Let me read that again. Now to each one, to each one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. 
If it is encouraged to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is given, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. The last passage. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen? Amen. There was a long time ago the uh, commercial that was uh, put together by the I was going to say NCAA, but it wasn't NCAA. Uh, the, uh, anyway, let me go on with the uh, saying. The saying is, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Amen. The initials just went out of my head. Okay, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Let me turn it around and say, a gift It's a terrible thing to waste. The gift of God is a terrible thing to waste. The spiritual gifts, a terrible thing to waste. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This is a very important message to us as Christians, as uh, believers, followers of Christ. Can you turn that down a little bit? Thank you. As followers of Christ, it is a terrible thing for us to neglect the word of God. Our roadmap, our GPS, our guidance is the word of God. And the word of God is put into us by the spirit of God. And we are empowered by the son of God. We should always recognize that the word of God is not written so that we can just read it. It's written so that we can read and we can understand and we can do what? Obey. Follow it. Do it. Look, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each one of you should do what? That's the word. Use. If you don't use it, you lose it. In this case, if you don't use it, the body of Christ loses it. Because we are not benefited by the gift that God has given to you because you refuse to use it. And it's very clear in here that it says, each one of you, nobody is exempt. And Paul can say, uh, Peter can say that very uh, clearly and very forcefully because he knows that every child of God is given at least one gift. Amen, lights? Every child of God is given at least one gift. Okay, you, are, you, you, you guys are going to get mad at me today. Okay? Because I have been at the church, it's going almost 40 years. And I have seen some people in those 40 years never use a gift. And I know we preach this, we teach it, we keep talking about it, but it's never put into practice. Said, each one of you, 
If you are in Christ, if you have believed in Christ, if you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, there is definitely one thing that he gave you. is the gift to benefit the body of Christ. Use it. Nike said, just do it. Whatever gift God has given to you, use it. There's absolutely no gift that God has given to you that is not needed in the body of Christ, that is not needed in the community, that is not needed in the war. So stop sitting down on your gifts. Somebody say, he's back. The gift that you have received, God has given them to you for a reason. So that the body of Christ may benefit from you. Now, please don't get me wrong. We benefit from you because you're here. You know, you're here every Sunday. Uh, Some of you anyway. You're here. You go to your cell group. You have fellowship and everything. That's good. But that's not using your gift. That's not using your gift. I cannot define for you whether you are born again or not because that is left to the Holy Spirit of God. But I do know that if you have been born again by the Spirit of God, God has given you a gift and God said, whatever that gift is, it is to be used. And it is to be used to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And all the passages that I have read today, it goes on and it emphasizes it over and over and over and over again. Now, when I started this message I gave some gifts out to some people. If I give you a gift, can you stand? If I give you a gift. That's all? Okay. Frida is away. Okay, well, if you got a gift, you got a gift. Yes, you got a gift too. You too got a gift. Oh. You see, you didn't know when I was going to ask for it. You got you got yours? Okay, it's in the car. Yours is in the car. You have yours? No? You have, you don't have yours? No, no, no. Okay. Well, it's at home. Okay. You use it every day. Okay. Let's give her a hand. Amen. She started using the gift already. Okay. Well, uh, can you tell us what your gift was? Jelly beans. You ate them already? Okay. (laughs) Okay. Money. Okay. You ate the food? Okay. All right. Uh, you ate it together? You split it. Okay. And we shared. All right. Okay. By the way, what was yours? All right. All right. Uh, Sister Lagomasino. Okay. Okay. Well, don't, don't, don't do that. Just come back. Enjoy the message. Don't come back. Gail. Okay. All right. And what did you get? Hand sanitizer. And have you used any? No? You just kept it in the box? Oh. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Dick and Roy, what did you get? Okay. Well, you've been keeping it in the box. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. All right. Well, are you getting the message? Okay. Um, sometimes we get, you, you may be seated. Sometimes we get gifts and uh, we put them away. How many of you have ever, you got up on Christmas Day and you look at the gift under the tree or wherever you put them and you said, man, what a nice box. For four months, you keep, keep coming back, nice box. It's wrapped very well. I know there's something in it. I know there's something good in it. A lot of times, that's how we use our gifts in the church. What happened today is not a surprise. I intentionally left you alone and wait and wait and wait and wait until I ask you for the gifts. You see how ready we are? Always ready to serve the Lord, right? Adam, where are thou? Come up here. <laughs> You got to stand over there. Tamara. Oh, sorry. This is yours. I'll give you somebody else. Tamara, please come up. All right. Okay. Um, Adam, what's in yours? Don't, don't open it. Just tell us what's in it. Huh? Change. You think it's change? Yeah. Okay. That's all. You sure? Why are you sure? <laughs> Timer, open yours. Tell us what's in there. Oh, <laughs> what what is this? What is that? Um, uh, I think it's to clean your glasses, right? Okay, you know what it's for. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what that is for? To style your nails. No, this one oh, here. It's an Apple iTunes gift card. So. What do you use it for? To download things on my iPhone. Okay, on your phone and all that, and or your computer. What do you use this one for? To file my nails. To file your nails. Man, you got two of them. <laughs> okay. Do you, what is this one here? It is okay. All right. So, um, do you need those or you don't need them? I need them. Okay. Uh, now, I'm telling you because I'm the one that gave it to you. Uh -huh. You had the freedom to do whatever you want to do with them. Okay? okay? Could you sit here for a minute yeah. so everyone can? So, Adam, we're still with you. <laughs> I really need to know what's in your box. Guess again. No, guess again. Guess again. Guess again? Yeah. Now, let's, be, let's come back to Adam. Okay, we're going to come back to Adam. Is everybody with me? What happened with Tamara? 
She opened it. Right? What did she do when she opened it? She checked it. She inspected it. She even noticed that I gave her two. Are they of the same kind? No, they're not of the same kind. They're different. Okay? So that's one of the things we need to do. And by the way, uh, that thing, you need to keep it with that so you don't lose oh, it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm, I'm not taking it back. <laughs> Deacon Hairston, what did she say this was? It's because you know what it is, right? Okay. Okay. Now, she doesn't use glasses. You don't use glasses. You do? Oh, okay. Adam, we're back. What's in it? Are you listening where we're talking to her? How did she find out what she has in the box? She opened and looked. She inspected. She, did she look for any help? Well, she told me I must be telling her something. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, Adam, you said you have coins in there. Okay. Is that the only thing you think you have? No, be honest. No, you think it's more than that. Why do you think it's more than that? Because I've listened to Ed and all the other gifts have stuff in them. They have more stuff in them. Yeah. Okay. You, because you know that from the character of the giver, that there are more things in there than just one thing. Right? Right? Okay. Now open it. Look what's in there. What is that one there? Oh, okay. More coins. A wine opener. It's a wine drinker. <laughs> Eraser. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So, Adam, is there anything in there that you don't know what to do with it? No? No? You understand exactly what you need to do with them. Right? Okay. All right. Both of you can go back to your seats. Thank you. God says that he gave us gifts in order to do what? Use it for what? Edify. Build up the body of Christ. Okay, so that the body of Christ may grow, right? Now, let me make some points, and then I'll do one illustration, and then I'll shut up. You need to make sure you understand that God has given you your gifts to edify the body of Christ. This is particularly true of the local church. God wants to build up the local church. God wants the local church to grow. When we talk about growing, we're talking about growing spiritually. We're talking about growing numerically. We're talking about growing in our knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that not only the church will benefit, But our community will benefit and the world will benefit. 
Okay. Please listen very carefully. Because I think many times we have misunderstood the message of God to the church. Are you listening to me? We have it on tape if you need a copy. No leader, no team, no ministry in the church at Village Baptist Church should prohibit a covenant member from using their spiritual gifts in the body. Est-ce que vous comprenez? Okay. No leader, no team, no ministry should prohibit a covenant member from using their spiritual gifts in the body of Christ. The ministry in the church is big enough for our small number. God knows what he's doing. Don't try to be God for us. Don't try to be the Holy Spirit for us. No one owns any particular ministry. Amen. Including the pastor. Nobody in the church owns a particular ministry. They're getting bigger now. I have some checks in here. Some of you that know I need to give you a check. Don't forget. Ministry is open to anyone that is part of the body of Christ. Ministry. True ministry in the church is open to anyone who is part of the body of Christ. Now, that that is a very significant statement, and I want to make sure you don't misunderstand what I'm saying. If you're part of the body of Christ, you're part of the local church, you're part of the universal church, so therefore, your ministry is in the local church, in the universal church, in the community, and around the world. The principle of spiritual gift is dependence and interdependency. You depend on me, I depend on you. And we work together to make this body what God wants it to be. Amen? Ministry in the church is not like your car. You have the title to your car. You don't have the title to the church. Only Jesus Christ has that. He said, this is my body. It's the body of Christ. He owns it. He has the title. He has the stained blood to show it that he has the title. He signed it with his blood. Stop trying to own the church. Stop trying to own your team. Stop trying to own the ministry. It does not belong to you. You don't have title to it. How much time do I have? Now let me let me see let me this is commercial. Okay. Break for a commercial. 
If you believe God is leading you to start a ministry in the church, you need to talk to the pastor. The pastor will lead you to the appropriate team leader that fits whatever ministry you want to start. In most cases, if it is a ministry, it's probably going to be under Jonathan Matthews. There is no prisoner in our church. Don't handcuff any covenant member from doing ministry on a team or on a ministry because they don't belong to you. Not only do we have to minister in our body at Village Baptist Church, we have to minister in Petaluma, we have to minister in Novato, we have to minister in Santa Rosa, we have to minister in Atlanta, Africa, we have to minister in Lagos, Nigeria. There is so much to do. Stop trying to handcuff people. Now, I know... Now, you may have been an usher all your life. If you've been an usher all your life, that was a problem anyway. Or you shouldn't have been. Why don't you want anybody else to be an usher? What's your problem? Oh, yes. Only the four of us. And if you're at village, you cannot say that I did not give you how to use your gifts at Village Baptist Church. Can you put that up? It's very clear. These are the teams we have in our church. We have the maturity team. We have the mission team. We have the ministry team. We have the membership team. We have the management team. We have music and worship team. We have media and publicity. Did I miss one? Drama. Because it's not M, we left it out. Uh, children's church is part of the ministry of maturity team. Okay, so those are the teams. If you want to work on those teams, these are the things, the gifts that you need. Maturity team, you need teaching, gift, administration, leadership, government, wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, pastor, teacher, helps. We are not saying you must have all those gifts. Amen. If the only gift you have is mercy, you can't say to us that you're going to use that and the best place to use it is the maturity team. Are you following me? Mission team. You need faith. You need to uh, evangelists. You need discernment. You need apostleship. You need giving. You need help. You need mercy. Ministry team. Hospitality, discernment, encouragement, help, serving, mercy, wisdom. On and on and on and on. If you don't have a copy of this, ask me for it. To build up the body of Christ. Amen? I'm almost done. So, if we're going to build up, which means the body of Christ should grow, right? And I I think the Lord knows what he's doing when he used that illustration. In order to plant something, what do you need? You need dirt? This one is really rich. 
This one came from my compost pile. It's already done. Because how many of you here know what compost is? Composting. Okay. Composting is the natural way to fertilize your garden. Okay. This one took me almost four months to make. What you're looking right here, it's looking like dirt, right? It had leaves when I started. It had grass when I started. It had banana peels, orange. Uh, most of the things in our house you don't throw away. You don't have to throw anything away. At least don't let me see you throwing it away. Okay? They go in the compost pile. And you add all these things together. It's so amazing to see them turn into soil. I don't have to go and get miracle grow. Because you know what I found out? Some of you will not shake my hands after. <laughs> I found out that this, like a cup of this, a compost pile, has more microorganisms in it more than the people on the face of the earth. Right here. And instead of going and buying those chemicals that are going to kill you, do it God's way. Amen. Don't throw it away. Use it. And so this is what we're going to use to grow our church. So I'm making more uh, mess here for Frida. She cleans the church. So we, we said in order to uh, grow, we need soil, right? Where are you going to put the soil? So you need a pot. You need a container. It doesn't have to be something fancy like this. And you don't, you can do it outside. You don't need a pot if you're doing it outside in your garden, right? But you need a container. What else do we need? We need seed. I have the miracle seed. Who can guess what this miracle seed is? Sunflower? No. Come on, guys. Somebody got to know. Huh? You know what it is? Sister Wade, maybe you know. No, it's, you can use it to make tea. Somebody said something? No, not a biscuit. You don't? Pomegranates, no. Pomegranates are small. Okay, that's very small. Oh, man. I thought somebody was going to get it. I'll be, I'll be able to give you something. This is a Moringa seed. Moringa. Moringa Olifera. You knew that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have the seed, right? In order to grow this, well, what do I need to do? Open it up a little bit, okay? We open it up. I'm going to really make a lot of mess today. So this is, the seed comes out of the thing. And what do we do? Should I put it at the very bottom? No, okay. So I need my finger. Put it in there. We we'll close it up. After we close it, what do we need? Water. We need water. I came prepared. Just a little bit. In fact, moringa don't like too much water. Yeah. 
Huh? Don't worry, because of the illustration, we try not to have holes. <laughs> okay. What else do we need? Light. Patience. Sunlight. Right? Okay. In order to do this right, I need a hammer, right? Why not? <laughs> Come on now. Don't tell me I brought a hammer for nothing. Okay. Okay, you tell me we, we don't need this to grow this, right? But we don't need a hammer at all? Not at all? We need it for something else, but not to grow this. Are you sure? Okay, I'll put it away. We need a calculator. What, what if the seed grows and everything grows and you try to sell it? You're not going to calculate how much you're making? You don't need it to grow. Okay. You may need it later. All right. Okay. Do I need this? It's a hand sanitizer. You, thought, you told me you were using yours. How come you didn't know what it was? Oh, you couldn't see it. Okay. <laughs> Ah, so then it means we need a farmer, don't we? The grower, yes, the sower. And Jesus, that's what Jesus called. Him. So, and then we need, I need this as the farmer to clean my hand. All right. This is a natural rooting powder. Yeah? Yeah. But because we have good soil, we don't need this. Right? Come on now. You're... What about this? Straws. I need it to... Mm, no. <laughs> we don't need it. We don't need it. I didn't know. I, I can't prepare. I can't prepare. Uh, what about this? Let me put those over here. Do I need this? Dick and Allen? I'm not going to measure. I'm not going to measure it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I forgot. We need this for it to work. Batteries. Ever ready. Duracell. You don't think it's going to help this? Okay. Let, let me let me tell you. That God has given us gifts that are going to benefit his body. Don't try to manufacture your own gifts. He knows what the body needs and he gave us a list in in the Bible, 21 of them. I even brought this, so just in case we need. I'm ready. I don't need it. I needed this, but I didn't use it. So I used my hand. I could have used it. Now I'm going to cover the thing again. So look at all the things we needed. Huh? Dick and Hessen, we need this. All right. Good catch. So understand this. The soil, as important as it is, 
cannot say water, don't come here. That's how stupid sometimes we sound in the church when people have gifts that can benefit the body of Christ. We don't need you. Son, I don't need you. I'll do it myself. You cannot do it yourself. The pastor cannot do it himself. The deacons cannot do it themselves. The teachers cannot do it themselves. We need everybody in the body to make the body grow. Please, you need to get this. I'm not looking for a clap or shout or anything like that. I'm just looking for you to understand it. If you have a ministry and somebody has accepted Christ and they have committed themselves to your local body, you have no reason, no authority at all to tell them they cannot use their gifts. Now, Music and worship team is a little bit different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you can't carry a tune, I want to be on the music and worship team. I want to be on the music and worship team. You, God didn't give you the talent. Amen. There's no, you don't even need a spiritual gift for that. You just don't have the talent. Period. Stay away. <laughs> we don't want people to come to our church and don't come back again. I know (laughs) so it's really important that we understand the principle the principle is that God wants his body to grow don't be a hindrance to the body growing because you don't want all the ingredients that is needed all the gifts that are needed to make the church work like it's supposed to work because you're too selfish I'm getting ready to shut up, okay? What does our mission statement say? Regarding the issue we're dealing with today. In fact, all of, all of the mission statement deals with everything doing with spiritual gifts and the growth of the body. But I want to particularly focus on equipping them to serve as what? ministers in the church, community, and around the world. That's all I want to deal with. Equipping them to serve as ministers in the church, community, and around the world. Are those just words we wrote down on paper? Do we really believe them? Then we need to act like we do believe them. Amen. When somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, I believe God has given me the gift of teaching and preaching. He's calling me to preach. I can say, wait a minute, we already have five. That's ridiculous. If 
if you're excluding somebody from your team, from your ministry, it's because that ministry does not belong to the church. It belongs to you. The passages are very clear. The reason why God gave us gifts is that so that the body of Christ may be built up. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, right? So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Do you want village to grow? Then stop being selfish. Take off the handcuffs. There are no prisoners in this church. The only way you can legitimately say to a person, because, you know, We want accountability and responsibility. That's why we talk about covenant membership. We don't want a Lone Ranger. That's a wrong name anyway because the Lone Ranger did not go alone. He would have never been successful. Learn to open up. Learn to accept people. Learn to help people grow so that they can become who you are, what you are. If you're better in the ministry than they are, let them give them time. Amen. Garoppolo did not stop playing because Tom Brady was there. But he learned. Carried the clipboard. And then the 49ers got him. And he won for them five games in a row. Somebody say, oh, Lord, don't talk about the 49ers. I'm going to stop the illustration right there. (laughs) Go Raiders. This is what God wants in his church. God does not want selfish people in the ministry. He doesn't want them as pastors. He doesn't want them as deacons. He doesn't want them as team leaders. Because if you are, the church will never be what it's supposed to be. Open it up. Handcuff. Take off the handcuffs. Let people minister. If even if people are not sure what their gifts are, let them try it on their on your team. And you can tell if it's not. Amen. And if it's not, you ought to be willing to accept that it's not. We'll conclude this message next week. Let us pray.